way out in front. I have one at because I think you got some folks in there four more training hours than me, but just for nineteen just for two thousand eighteen. <coughs> Because of the new board member. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I stayed listening to Governor speak, so, you know. I John, know. didn't you go to the I did. Yeah. I think that's messed up. We'll get that correct. Sorry, I had to have the You got cheated. Maybe you're six hours. Oh, well, I didn't go to the state. Oh, I guess that's, yeah, that's right. You got cheated? No, I missed state. Yeah. But yeah. I've met my statutory obligation. It's six, so we're going to call the January Alma School Board meeting to order. We have Mr. Ron Hot is not present, everybody else is. Have y'all had a chance to look at the December 3rd minutes? It's <coughs> Exhibit A. Second to last paragraph, I had them add, um, so this is slightly different from your agenda, that the executive session was for discussing a personnel issue, just so we statutory comply, but that is in there to discuss why we did, in case you recognize there's a that's changed on each one of that. So, is there a motion to approve the December 3rd minutes? I'll move to approve the December 3rd minutes. Is there a second to that? Any discussion on those? All in favor with a right hand vote? Any opposed? It carries. Let's turn to Exhibit B, which is going to be the December 17th, 2019 minutes. Move to approve the December 17th minutes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor with a right hand vote on approving December 17th minutes. Any opposed? That passes. Let's look at Exhibit C. That's December 20th, 2019 minutes. Move to approve December 20 minutes. Second. All in, any discussion? All in favor with a right hand vote. Any opposed? That carries. We have no public comments tonight. No one. And that would start our agriculture presentation. Um, my name is Laika Bromley. I'm the ag teacher here at Alma, um, an FFA instructor. So when we were invited um, to speak this evening, we decided that we were going to highlight some of the um, events that the FFA has done thus far um, throughout the year. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and let, I have five of my nine FFA officers here. I'm going to let them introduce themselves and then we'll go through and um, talk about those events. We have a few pictures to show you about those. So. Go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll. Okay, I'm Mary Scavenin. I'm Emma Lord. I'm Isabel Martinez. I'm Emma Boyd. I'm Woody Crabtree. Okay. Um, so this was the Crawford County Fairgrounds cleanup. It was a couple Saturdays before the um, Crawford County Fair. It is an annual event. Um, five out of all of our FFA members showed up, and two of them showed livestock at the fair. So this is our Portsmouth FFA day. Um, 32 students, uh, 32 members uh, to compete in various events such as floor culture, livestock, dairy, poultry, nursery, and agronomy judging. Okay, and I'll add to this. Um, this is an event that at the Arkansas Oklahoma State Fair is hosted every year um, for our 4-H and FFA t or chapters and clubs to compete at. Um, and so most of the CDE or our career development events, that's what that stands for, most of those contests happen in the spring. Um, but for the state fair there does this every year. Um, and so it was a really great opportunity for us to be able to take 32 members. I mean, that was nearly uh, or is half of our program um, at the high school level and take them and let them see what that looks like and develop that interest so we can have that as we move forward into that season now in the spring. 
This is the first fundraiser that we had. Farm Credit donated two fire pits valued at $500 each to uh, local 4-H and FFA chapters. And each ticket was worth a dollar, and six tickets were worth five dollars. And together we sold over 800 tickets. Okay, and then I'll talk about this. Um, so we wrapped up the live, the show season for 2019. Um, we had two high schoolers, Emma was one of them, and then one of our officer, other officers, uh, thanks to them, was showed at the high school level. Now, of course, since we didn't have a program um, going into the show season and those animals are purchased in the winter or spring, um, they were they had originally started, um, or they showed through 4-H, um, but since we have the FFA program now, we got to kind of tie them to us as well. Um, and then that picture on the left with uh, that says Crawford County Fair. Those are some of our um, our two high schoolers, and then all of our younger showmen that are showing through the 4-H program right now um, at Alma. So it's really neat to see the opportunities that we have um, coming up into the FFA <coughs> program as they get older, and those students who will um, be showing potentially under FFA uh, in the near future. So. And there was great success um, between all of them at various levels, where that, whether that was the county level, the state fair level, or even um, nationally. So. so this is our annual Crawford County Farm Bureau meeting. Uh, me and two other, well actually me and another FFA member went to this. Uh, we got to meet the local um, Farm Bureau members and we got to enjoy dinner and um, hear upcoming events. Yes, so um, Farm Bureau decided this year that they were going to start inviting local um, FFA chapters to bring two representatives to speak or to just see what goes on and be able to be um, meet Farm Bureau members throughout the um, county. And so we were able to go and be able to listen to what's going on in our industry as well as within Farm Bureau. This is our hunted corn maze. It lasted for two nights, and both nights we had around 20 to 25 students helping out from scaring people and leading groups through and taking money up front. In total, we made $750 over both nights, and it was a really fun night for all the students who came. Okay, I'll talk on this one. Um, this was a workshop that the Extension Office in Crawford County held. It was, we only had two students that were able to attend. Um, that was that time where we had a little bit of bad weather come through and it was rescheduled to the next week. So we could only take a couple um, because of that. Uh, but we had two students go who are interested in poultry um, and interested in raising their own poultry. And so they got to hear from University of Arkansas graduate and PhD students on poultry care and the poultry industry and um, what that looks like right now and then ask questions on production of poultry. So. This is the bingo night and chili supper that we held. The FFA members went to local businesses to collect donations for uh, bingo prizes. We ended up getting 50 bingo prizes and 10 donations for a silent auction. And we made enough money to buy gifts for seven children. Okay, um, the Alma Christmas Parade. So this was something that we let sneak up on us a little bit, and then one of my officers reminded me, hey, we're supposed to be doing this, um, or we had said we were going to. So we, in the last week nearing, we decided um, we put together what we were going to do. Um, we went and cut down some trees uh, and got some, wrapped some boxes up and decorated and then or decorated the trees, and then we cut out ornaments that represented products of agriculture. So we could um, display, not only did we want to be a part of the Christmas parade and the community event, but we wanted to also be able to advocate for our industry um, and be able to show, hey, this is what comes from agriculture, um, not only every day, but during the holidays specifically is what we targeted. So we had eggnog, we had all types of different stuff on um, hanging on our trees and little paper ornaments. Um, and we ended up, we called it Farm Fresh Holiday and Christmas brought to you by agriculture. And we ended up placing second in our division. So we were pretty <coughs> happy with that for the first year. Um, this is our Office of Christmas Party. We had seven of our nine officers show up. We ate dinner and snacks. And then we did a team building activity building gingerbread houses. <laughs> and um, we ended the night playing board games and discussing this meeting. Um, so these are our FFA jackets that we recently got our first shipment in in over 15 years. Um, so the students that had a 
and order them. We are able to take them home yesterday and the day before, and hopefully more students will want to order them so we can create more shipments. We already have a second order filled out, so we just got to get that put in. Um, so I'll speak on this just real quickly. In the classroom, we've done various things throughout the year. We started the year and we mainly, we spent a lot of time focusing on um, how the agriculture industry affects us and how we could be advocates for our industry. Um, and then also looking at the whole concept of FFA and how that fits into our ag ed courses. Um, it gets, sometimes it's hard to come or pull in the idea that FFA fits inside really our classes at the high school level and so that's a neat thing that not always um, is the case and then on the picture on the right that's us in the lab getting to use some of our new equipment that uh, we got in right before school started so we were using pH sensors in one of these I guess I don't have an exact picture of that but we were using pH sensor sensors and testing um, the le pH levels of different substances so looking forward to wrap up in a couple weeks, we're taking 11 students to down to Hot Springs to attend um, at the FFA campgrounds, state campgrounds, to attend a leadership conference. And we're headed right into our <coughs> GDE season. So we'll be competing with various teams. We're starting practice next week. And then uh, we're looking to purchase livestock projects. We have quite a few high schoolers um, who are interested in showing livestock. So hopefully we can get those numbers up next year. And then we've started, or we're about to start our so a couple more fundraisers through Country Meats and Blue and Gold. And then uh, Miss Candy Hop is helping us put together an Alma FFA car show to um, help cut some of those expenses for state FFA convention that will happen in April. And uh, as well as our FFA banquet that's also in mid-April. So that's it. Thank you so much for allowing us to speak with you. Any questions, discussion for them? I think it's remarkable what all uh, the, uh, the, the class has done this fall in four months of a brand, brand new program, starting with starting from nothing at all. And it's just remarkable how much you've gotten done. We talked last month that uh, we were going to have our Christmas store, and uh, Miss Burns, uh, formerly Miss Grill, Miss Burns, runs that for us, and they did a super job. Uh, they raised over twenty-six hundred dollars profit on those days, so we'll be using some of that money just for different things, different projects there in the building that teachers need, and um, just uh, it's a great time. And some of the students. Uh, she was taking back some of the students that, you know, they may have trouble counting or this or that. And, you know, she handed them a stack of $5 bills or $10 bills or whatever. And she's like, okay, count these for me. And she knew how much was in there already. And uh, she handed them to them and, and they just took off with it, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20. I mean, and so she was just really happy to see those kind of things happen in this program. She does a super job. Um, January 13th through February 14th. <coughs> We are going to do uh, Kindness is a Sweet Challenge, and we're piggybacking off of uh, Intermediate School. They did that back in the fall, and uh, the students, the, the goal is for each class to make a paper chain of acts of kindness that they've done. And uh, if a student does something kind, they get to make a little loop, put it on the chain, and uh, the longest chain will win the contest. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, Tuesday, January 14th, uh, coming right up here, a APS boy and girl will be the ball boy and the ball girl for the basketball games. Uh, we have our girl will be Mason Couch, and our boy is Hagen Goodwin. Uh, they'll get to sit on the bench with the team. Uh, they'll get to run out with them, be introduced. They'll get a $5 Sonic card, and uh, uh, their faces today were just great. I mean, when they came in and we were telling them all about it, Miss Harris had already contacted the parents and, and all that, and uh, all their eyes just lit up, you know. Uh, so it was really good. So uh, appreciate uh, Coach Lockridge and Mr. Biggs putting that together for us. And uh, that kind of sums it up for primary school. Thank you. Let's go, Mr. Wolf. Oh. Um, in school tonight? No. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> Last month, talked about our upcoming spelling bee. We held that on December 13th. We want to congratulate 7th grader Lucas Spain and 8th graders Jacob DeSanto, Caleb Downs, and Jackson Frey Aldenhoven. Got it. 
uh, for all placing and going to be competing at the end of January at the Crawford County Spelling Bee. Uh, also, I mentioned we had an upcoming uh, robotics tournament that was on December 14th. Uh, we had two divisions, 3rd <coughs> through 5th grade and 6th through 8th grade. So this is the younger group. They do the, what's called the VEX IQ Robotics. It's kind of more Lego build type robotics. Uh, we had 51 teams show up that day. There were over 300 students, coaches, parents in our gym all day long. And it was absolutely wonderful. It went off really, really well. Uh, kudos to Ms. Julie for putting that together. I just want to share a quick email she got back. Uh, I want to thank you and the whole Alma Middle School for hosting this event yesterday. Everything was so well organized and easily available. <coughs> You all deserve a hearty thank you from all the parents and participants. I know this kind of event takes countless hours of energy from you, your tens of volunteers, custodians, and your administrators. Please share this so every email so everyone will understand that I appreciate the hard work. I also know that hosting an event like yesterday can sometimes get negative comments from people that didn't get their way. I hope this communication can negate any negative comments that you hear because the competition was awesome. So it was really good. Everybody had a good time. It was very smooth. Uh, we've already got plans in for repeating that one next year and adding the second one. Uh, there's not a lot of those events close by for our kids, particularly that age, to attend. So us hosting gives the opportunity for our kids to participate, plus everyone in the area to participate as well. I uh, also want to give a shout out to our band, All Region members. We had 14 7th and 8th graders who qualify for the All Region Clinic, and that will be later this month, coming up January 24th, 25th. And the last two pieces I have for you, I've uh, got some data I want to share with you. you probably heard of uh, GoFundMe. We have several teachers who have started using that to get some items for their classrooms. And at first I was kind of, I don't know if I like that idea or not, but they've kind of taken off with it. And we had several when we came back from January, like they got funded or they received their materials. So I got to thinking, how much are we actually getting from this GoFundMe program? And so I went and asked everyone to send me your totals, what you received, what you were funded for, and what kind of things you were funded for. And we usually get a fax sent to us when those come through. And you see $200 here, $300 here, and I asked them to total them up. I was blown away. We've had over almost $5,600 just this semester in GoFundMe. And it ranges from uh, Ms. Pitts had uh, exploring ceramics, so she got some clays, and the kids were able to do some different things building with the clay. Several of them want to get headphones for their uh, Chromebooks so the students can be listening, watching videos and tutorials with headphones not disrupting the whole class. Uh, we've got uh, STEM kits, ro <coughs> coding robot kits, all kinds of things. And these are just things that if they came and asked me, I'd probably have to say, I don't know if I got that in the budget to get that for you this year. And here's the things that are funded outside of the school district. Uh, Ms. Rito, she was kind of the one that tipped me off, but I need to check this out. You see the histology slide. She teaches sixth grade science. She asked for a set of slides, glass slides you put under a microscope uh, with blood so students could look at and because they were talking about histology from cells to tissues to organs. And I said, that's expensive. That's about a $500 set. And she said, yeah. And I got funded. And she said uh, she had a notice that she was at about $235 left and some company in New York said, we saw your GoFundMe account. Love what you're doing with young science kids doing this. Here's the other $235 to fund you. So that's awesome. Really great. Awesome. Uh, and then the last thing down there, there's a link you can go to if you have some time to check out. We had several, I think there were five middle school students whose artwork was selected to be exhibited with a program through the Fort Smith National Historic Site called Justice and Injustice. And if you go on there, there's tons of wonderful art projects, but about a third of the way down, if you hover over the picture, it shows you what school they're from. And there were five of our students that are on that, and then you can go online and see that. It was very cool. Thank you. Mr. Parker? <coughs> I didn't know that we were I had to raise money. We haven't raised any money. For uh, everybody else's. We spend a lot of money. Uh, before, since we met last, we had our uh, annual military inspection here in your LTC. Did uh, if you don't know what that is, it's where the area commander comes from Gulfport uh, and inspects our entire program. Uh, we held it in the arena this year. It's the first time we've ever done that. It's always been in Crabtree before. It went really well. We're still waiting on a report for that. But I uh, did a, did a uh, debrief with Commander Ladner. Very, very pleased with everything that we're doing. Um, our state cheer right before Christmas, as you, uh, I'm sure you already know, uh, we've got state runner-up at Hot Springs, so they'll be going to Orlando uh, in the first part of February. Just a week after, our dance team is also in Orlando uh, competing at Nationals. Our basketball team is going to be beginning our conference play tomorrow night uh, in Bologna. We've got several different events coming up this month. <coughs> History Day is the 29th, 
science fairs the 15th. Um, we're going to have interim testing the third week in, in January. Science, first was science. We've got two indoor <coughs> drill meets this month. We've got robotics in Bentonville also coming up. Just a little side note, I know it's not until April, but uh, did finalize all the plans for prom. We're going to be holding prom this year in Fort Smith at the ProPAC building, which is on kind of on Garrison and Rogers. It's a reno newly renovated, really, <coughs> built, really nice building. It's the first time in six years we've not had it on campus. So uh, our seniors and juniors are real excited for that. That's it. Any request to pull anything out of the consent agenda? Uh, I'd like to make one comment for you. It's something new that we've never done before, the IDE, the board training hour. That's a new requirement that every January that that be reported to the board what your own training hours are. So that's why that's here. It's a new requirement uh, implemented this year. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion on that? <coughs> All in favor of the consent agenda with the right hand vote? <coughs> Any opposed? Passes. Superintendent's report. Don't have anything to tell you. That's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's January. <laughs> Any old business? No. Anything? And on the new business, do you want to go over that? Sure. Um, the, re the February regular meeting date will be Thursday, February 13th. I need to be out of state at a meeting that day. I'd like to suggest that we move that meeting forward to the following Tuesday, the 18th. Uh, that way, if there is anybody that wanted to be here, they we wouldn't have already had, had the meeting and they could come on uh, then on the 18th. Let's kind of start. I think that let's... Let's go with the, give me a date you can and then we'll go around. So I'm available the 6th and any Wednesday. And the 24th, I'm available. I can do that. So. <coughs> I'm available all those dates. Wednesday's tough for me, but any time after that's no problem. So that would leave us with the 6th and the 24th. So we either are moving it up, I hate to move it up just one week. But we're early this month, too, though. I mean, in, not early, but the way it kind of Earlier falls, part of the month, it's yeah. gonna, That would put us... Are you good with the 6th if we move it up? That's or, okay. Yeah. Or would we rather do the 24th? 6th is fine with me. Let's do the 6th. Any last minute looking? Do we need to approve that, I guess? I move to set the... Do we call it a special meeting? <coughs> no, just a rescheduled regular meeting. Do we have a um, move to set the February meeting for the 6th? Oh, second vote. At, at 6. At 6 p.m. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Check, check. All in favor with a right hand vote? I appreciate you doing that. That, <coughs> that will be. That will be good for from my schedule and for me. I appreciate it. Let's get it up on the website as soon as we'll, possible. We'll do that. And we'll we'll do that first thing tomorrow. Perfect. <laughs> um, all right. Um, item two. Um, I think you all know a little bit about this. I think you uh, visited with some folks at the uh, state meeting last month in Little Rock uh, about uh, food service outsourcing. Outsourcing of various things by school districts has become more and more popular in recent years. Uh, some districts outsource transportation. A lot of big districts around the country, really big districts, Kansas City type districts, uh, their, their transportation is outsourced. Uh, some places, some districts outsource custodial maintenance, building uh, grounds maintenance. Uh, some districts outsource uh, substitute teachers. That's the only thing we have ever outsourced in, uh, in the past. Was for two years, we outsourced substitute teachers, and uh, we, we just did it for two years, and then we went back to doing that ourselves. Uh, I've gotten a little bit interested in, in outsourcing food service. Uh, now, let me say very quickly and very emphatically, I'm nowhere near ready to recommend that we do that. We're very much just in the explore, exploring, looking at it, thinking about it, trying to decide if it's the right thing for us to do or not. But 
to answer all those kinds of questions, you've got to talk about it and look at it, and that's that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, I think I think all of you had the chance. At one of the one of the companies was at the, the state conference, and I think many of you did uh, visit with them. There are there are actually seven different companies approved by the Department of Education to uh, to do that in Arkansas schools. Currently, only four of them are actually actually working in any schools. Uh, uh, those four combined have about uh, 80 school districts, and they're they're very even. They're, all four of those companies have either 19 or 20. So doesn't really seem to be some one of the companies that's dominant over the others. Uh, the question obviously comes up, why would we be even thinking about this? What's in it for us? Well, obviously, we wouldn't even consider doing it if it wasn't going to be a benefit to us in multiple ways. Uh, and let me say again, and I'll probably say this four or five times before I quit talking about this, I'm, I'm not anywhere near ready to say this is the right thing for us to do. We're just at the point of looking at it and thinking about it. Um, these companies are generally pretty large. They do this all over the country, so they have ter terrific buying power. They can buy everything from you know, cooking equipment to dishes to food way less, way cheaper than we can just because they're so big and have such, such strong buying power. Uh, one of the things they typically do is they take on the responsibility of upgrading and updating equipment. When it, needs to, when it needs to be replaced, that becomes one of the things they do. They often go in and will, uh, for lack of a better term, redecorate the, uh, di the dining area, the, the, the serving area, to make it more appealing to students. Uh, they, in, in most cases, and again, maybe talking a little premature here, but they will, they will have a chef in many cases a chef that is full-time in a district and I think we are of the size that they would have a full-time chef here all the time working with our staff with recipes with the best way to do things the best way to cook things all in the name of making it better um, it, it almost seems like it's win-win uh, there doesn't seem to be as we first start thinking about it doesn't seem to be any downside one of the things that is very important, and I visited with all of our food service workers uh, this morning uh, at each building uh, about this, uh, they would continue to be our employees. They would continue to work for us. Nothing changes about that. They get paid the same. They work the same schedule. Their health insurance stays the same. Their retirement stays the same. None of that changes at all. Uh, another. Another factor is, you know, sometimes people think about this and say, well, it's going to say McDonald's or Taco Bell or Pizza Hut, and that's what the food's going to be. No, that's, it's not franchised operations. It's still our people cooking our food with our recipes for what our kids, you know, want to have. The program still has to completely meet all of the regs that we have to meet today in terms of federal and state regulations about how much salt is in the food and all that kind of stuff. And of course, it's horrendously long, a list of things that we have to comply with. That doesn't change at all. <clears throat> Free and reduced doesn't change. That program still is intact in exactly the same way. Um, the state furnishes us a template, which we are required to use for, for an RFP. Um, and this is, this is just a blank template. I've done nothing with it yet. Uh, you can see it's a good bit to it. Uh, we will put our information on this and, the, and then first step then is to send it to the state for them to say yes you've done it right and then we would put that out put this out to these seven companies for proposals this is a request for proposal then they would have the time to submit their proposal back to us uh, another step in the process that is required would be a, a time for them to come in here see our facilities see what we're talking about, ask questions, all that sort of thing. Uh, <clears throat> the process would take uh, roughly two months from now to get to the point that we would have the proposals back and be ready to consider do we want to recommend doing this and if so with which company. I don't know whether we get a, a proposal from all seven companies or less than that. I have no idea until we send it out. 
Uh, one of the other things we, we will be doing is uh, visiting schools in Arkansas that are <coughs> roughly our size that have programs with all of the, all of the companies. We, what do you like? What do you not like? What works? What doesn't work? What do you wish you could do different? Why are you doing it? Are you thinking about quitting doing it? Visiting with the cooks in the buildings, you know, what works for you? What's the problem for you? Getting all those kinds of questions answered. That'd be part of our uh, evaluation of whether or not this is something we ought to do. Uh, so the, our plan is, is to get started on fulfilling out, put, filling in the blanks on this RFP pretty soon. Uh, get it to the state, get their approval, set a date for, it to, for the vendors to come in, get their questions answered, set a date for them to turn in their proposals. Uh, before we can, before we can uh, act on it, before I can even present it to you, if, if that's going to be our recommendation, it has to go back. To, the one we're going to recommend has to go back to the state for them to be sure everything's right. Because, you know, f meeting the federal regs on, on school food service is very touchy. Uh, it's very exacting. It's very specific. And the state's not going to let us ma mess up, in other words. They're going to look at it on the front end and on the back end. At that point, if, if we feel like it's something that we want to recommend that we do, it, if at that point we would bring it back to the board with the recommendation, with the RFP, we would get that to you ahead of time to review uh, and for the board to consider whether or not we want to do this. Typically, I, I'm guessing that would happen at either the March or April meeting, just depending on how things go, and we would shoot toward signing a contract somewhere <coughs> in May, probably, What's something like that. typical contract length? Uh, typic typically, they're five years. Uh, they are, they, they have se severability clauses in them. It's a five-year contract, but, you know, it's one of those that any, either party can, can terminate it if you want to at the end of any year. Um, I, again, I, you know, it, this, is, this is taking a step in a different direction than, than anything we've ever done, and I certainly want to proceed cautiously <clears throat> and be sure before we do it, that if we decide we want to do it, that it is the right thing to do. Uh, I, th I think that there's a good chance that it is, but I'm not convinced that it is until we've done our, our work this spring to be sure. And the, the, quite honestly, the number one thing in us making, uh, making that determination is visiting with other schools. And we will talk mostly with schools that are about our size. You know, it doesn't help us a lot to talk to a lot larger school or a lot smaller school. We need to talk to schools that operate about like we do in terms of numbers of campuses, numbers of kids fed, those sorts of things, and that's what we'll do. And I would anticipate that we'll go to at least a half a dozen different schools and be there at mealtime, see how it works, see what they do. I have for you, and I, I, I almost hesitated to do this, this is a, a booklet that one of the vendors put together for us. I, we didn't ask for it, they just did it. They knew we were interested, we, that word kind of gotten out. So I don't want you to think at all that we're leaning toward this company, at all. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about them either, but I'm just saying just because we have this does not mean that they're the front runner or they're my favorite or anything like that. doesn't mean anything like that. But it really does show, I mean, you can see it's a lot of stuff here. It really shows what they do. Uh, they've kind of customized it to us. Uh, it shows a lot of pictures of what they do in other schools in Arkansas. It's actual pictures of Arkansas schools. And I think that's beneficial to, to see and, and, and to know about. So take these with you. Uh, spend some time over them, with them in the next weeks uh, at your leisure. Uh, please, please contact me. I, I, I encourage you. I hope you will contact me with your thoughts, <coughs> with any, any, anything you have to think about it, positively or negatively. Uh, uh, we, we, we want to get this right, we want to make the right decision, and, and we want to be sure that if we do this, that that is you know, well reasoned and well thought of, thought out, and that it makes sense for us. <coughs> just, I mean, just to comment, when we were there visiting with the food service, we did have another school board member from around the school that was using the particular group we were talking to. He said that's one of the best things they've ever done he's since he's been on the school. Well. So. And just because it works for them doesn't mean it will for us. That's right. You know, we got to, of course, keep. I appreciate that comment, and I, that, that's important. But you know, we've got to make our decision. Sure. I what was the opinion this morning in talking to staff 
<coughs> well, you know, everybody's nervous of change about anything. I understand that. And we, we didn't have a whole, I mean, uh, they were in the business in the middle of getting ready for lunch. So we didn't take a lot of time. I, just, I didn't want them to, uh, to tomorrow hear about us talking about it tonight and go, what? You know, I wanted them to know, you know, and not hear rumors that might be wrong. I wanted to hear, wanted them to hear. So we really didn't have a lot of time for much conversation. I told them, I did tell them that, you know, I would for sure keep them informed every step of the way as to what we were talking about, what what we were doing, and I certainly will do that because it affects them more than it does anybody, <coughs> except, except maybe our kids. You know, I know in talking to other schools, you'll go visit with those cooks and staff. Absolutely, and absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we said to outsource the whole thing. <coughs> I'm kind of confused. Where do they make their money? Well, are they just we're talking about the buying power, but we keep all our employees? Or are they just a? I mean, should we just? They're be a buying? they're a management company. Think of them as a management company. They are. <coughs> should we they, just not be buying our food smarter? Yeah, this one we talked to. They provided the Debbie Stewart. Yeah, yeah. As, they, as you all may or may not know, Debbie provide, is retiring right? this summer, and that was kind of the 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 impetus to think about doing that now rather than some other time because they would provide that person and uh, obviously there's money changes yeah. hands but do we do you get to be involved in the hiring of who that person completely, is completely they don't do anything I mean they don't do anything without our approval so where does their money come from they good question their buying power, and again, I'm just taking their word for this and the fact that it works in other schools. I, you know, I don't. I, that'll be in the proposal. I don't know any numbers to tell you, but their buying power, that they claim and document a significant increase in student participation where they've done it, which of course is is uh, more revenue. I think they said 30 percent, which we know statistics can go. That was shocking. Though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have, yeah. can we in the next two months get similar data on what we do to be able to... That'll be part of the proposal. That'll be part of what we put in the RFP and then what they respond to. Yeah. Absolutely. But the, the employees we have now, the staff we have now, <coughs> they stay... Exactly like they are. Through a, paid by Alma School District and retirement stays the same, no, no reset, no start over. That's correct. Nothing there. That's correct. Um, Every company, well, that's a requirement by the state that that be an option uh, for employees. Now, we're planning on nothing changing. Typically, what the companies tell me is that as time goes on, some people, some new employees that come to work, they choose to work for the company rather than the school district. And it ends up that there's some of both. Uh, some, some of the staff works for the school district. The people working right alongside them work for the company. Uh, that seems a little strange to me, but apparently it works just fine. Again, those are the kinds of questions. Question those are the kinds of questions we have to we have to work. get really really concrete answers to. Do we need to approve you even filling out this RFP? Is there any approval? Not that's not required. To... No. Okay, no. So what about that? Go. Ahead. Go ahead. So do we take our current food service budget and say it's a million dollars, and <coughs> they come to us and say we can do? Everything you were doing for nine hundred thousand dollars is that how this is looked at, or is this? Well, it, it's it's it depends on what all we put in is the it? IFP. Uh, it, it's, let's say we I'm not gonna be silly here. Let's say we want we say we want to serve T-bone steaks twice a week. Well, that's a cost that, that has a cost to it more of the so than so they factor that kind of thing. We we give them that kind of information, and then that's what they base their numbers on, and. I, you know, our objective is not to make money, not to profit from it, but many schools do. Many schools at the end of the year, the company writes the school district, uh, in some cases, a really big check. That's not my objective. I'd like for the program to pay for itself, as we talked last summer. But my objective is not to make it a, a profit center. Mm -hmm. But that often happens because, you know, again, I don't know any other way to say it. This apparently works very well if it's done right. So. Is a few months ago, we obviously discussed school lunch prices. How does we still set that. We still stay in control of, of, of food prices completely. So we control everything. We get to pick everything. We do everything. But there's another company involved that somehow makes money off. I'm just, I'm just blown away how this. It's again, it's it's the 
I'm with you, Chapin. Okay. I, I've had the same, it's very same. It. I mean, it doesn't add up. How does this me. make sense? Uh, and I, the only, the only thing, and, until we really see it on paper, it's their buying power and the and the increase in participation. They, they make it. I think you'll see that in these in these brochures. They 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 make it. They do. They spend a lot of money on marketing to our two students. They're marketing to students to get them to all come eat, eat their food, not bring it, not brown bag from home. Make it attractive. Make it an attractive environment. They they do, they do a lot of things with kids to promote food service, and you know it's just like in any business. The more you sell, the more you make. So. Well, like anything, being new, it's going to be exciting for kids, but that wears off after a couple of years sometimes. And that's so one of our other questions is we, as we look at some of the, you know, <clears throat> this has been going on in some Arkansas schools for 15 or 20 right. years. It's not, you know, not something that just started recently. Now, it can, seems to continue to increase. The numbers of school districts participating seems to can be continuing to increase. I don't have that statistic, and I want to get that also. Is I've got a list of the participating districts, but I want to find out how long all of them, and when they, when each other started. I don't have that information yet. Well, we met their chef, and we several of them. Yeah, and they had two or three there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And they they gave us food to eat. It was really good. Yeah. Well, that's all well and good, but they also knew who they were, where they were. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to sell a program, so they brought their best out. Again, I. I, I <coughs> I, I, I'm very sincere and very serious in saying I, I am not here to try to talk you all into this tonight. I'm just letting you know this is something that I think it is worth considering and is worth us putting some time and effort into getting more information and looking at it. I didn't want to just wait till we had a proposal and say, here, to vote on this. I wanted to give you all this background, let you think about it, let you, let you have these brochures, and, uh, you know, it'll be at... It'd be it'd be March at the soonest before we before we do anything else. Last question, I promise. Things like a bookmobile when we make all the sack lunches and special yeah. events yeah. stuff like that. All that specialty stuff is included. <coughs> they it, cater they cater mm -hmm. events too. Yeah, yeah they the actually do catering. Football banquet, bank, FFA yeah. banquet. If whatever. we wanted them to, they would take over our athletic concessions if we wanted them to. They don't insist on that. That's up to us. But they would do all that if we wanted them to. They do anything we wanted to do basically. The, the, the companies that I've had some conversations with, they all emphasize every school is different and they know that. And every school has different wants and needs. And if they're going to be successful, they have to respond to all those different wants and needs. Any other questions? I think obviously this is a big, big decision that's going to have to be made. So I don't know if we have a study session of some sort to. What I would like to do is when we get the RFP in draft form, I'd like to send it to all of you all for your comments and your thoughts. And then if you want to sit down and actually have a conversation about it, that'd be fine with me. Mm -hmm. Do you think we should send that out, get more of the hard information, and then do one? Well, we may need to do I, I, I'd like for you all to look at it just in draft form before right. we do anything else with it. And then if we want to do it again at the, uh, as, after we get them back, we can do that too. Sounds good. I know this is a big step. Nobody knows this bigger than me. And I know we got to be careful that we make the right decision. So you can count on that. That we're gonna we're 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 gonna go we're gonna be thorough. We're gonna take we're not gonna rush it, we're gonna get it right. It's safe to assume these are mostly national companies or yeah, uh, yeah, I've got the list of them here. Uh, some of them I've never heard of. OPA, O-P-A-A -A Food Management. Uh, they're one of the ones that has about 20 school districts in Arkansas. Uh, they're headquartered in Chesterfield, Missouri. Taher, T-A-H-E-R Incorporated in Minnesota. Preferred Meal Systems, uh, Taher is not in Arkansas. Preferred Meal Systems in Berkeley, Illinois is not in Arkansas. Compass Group doing business as Chartwells. Compass Group is one of the largest companies in the world. Uh, their this division of them is called Chartwells. Uh, they they do the University of Arkansas. I do happen to know that, and they are in Arkansas. Uh, Aramark Educational Services, <coughs> Philadelphia, uh, they are in Arkansas. K12 Culinary Collection, 
is actually headquartered headquartered at Bryant, Arkansas, and they are in Arkansas. And then Sodexo operations. They do not presently have any Arkansas public schools. They used to have University of Arkansas athletics concessions. That's changed to Chartwell, but a few years ago, for a number of years, uh, Sodexo had that. But they don't have any Arkansas public schools. So, so that's the companies. That request. Do you do you <coughs> bid it like as we currently are, or what we cur our current menu, or is this? We give them what? that. We give them that as yeah. Here's here's current. Here's okay. what we do currently. What would you propose to do different? Okay. So there would be a, an ability or a way to uh, not exactly apple to apple, but say if, if we're doing it this way for this much money, you could do it the same way for exactly. what your bid is. Yeah. Not the. I don't see. They the change the menu. Story. I mean, their sales pitch was they change the menu. They make their money yes. on increased participation. Um, so I mean, you know, they, they talk about more it cost and vote, to vote, vote, kids vote, and change the menu. Um, Monthly, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. In the high school level, they, they actually do. Meals. They give a ping for the kids. federal government, right? Mm -hmm. So they, you know, as long as they can serve it less than the cost of the, exactly. the reimbursement, that's part of where the profit is. And so they increase the number of meals sold. sold with some money. Do they handle the good? Did they take over the dealing with the state or the government? On no, we still have to sign off on all the paperwork because they're they're we're they're our agents. Yeah. Okay. Would breakfast still stay mm -hmm. free? Lunch yep. to yeah, the book will be all that kind of stuff. N nothing like that. No nothing like that goes away unless we want it to go away. We don't want breakfast to go no. away. No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Well, again, please look at this material and you know, drop by or call me or email me and you, you know, let's sit down and visit with it with, with about it. Uh, you, you know, I am always happy for you to do that, and I hope you will. Even more than no, more than normal on, on this topic because we got we want to be sure we get this right. Let's go item three. Um, Janet has had been asking for days to get the statement of financial interest forms, and they said they'd mailed them, and now we found out tonight they mailed them to you all. So, uh, if you all want us to do anything to help you with them, we'd be happy to. If you need Janet to notarize them, uh, she'd be happy to do that. If you want us to mail them. If you want to just take care of it all yourself, that's fine too. Just be sure you do. For the record, mine's filed. <laughs> Already? I have to do it also, and I didn't get a form. <laughs> I got mine today. We have one student transfer, or is it two? No, it's just one to approve tonight. I moved to approve the student transfer. Second. Any discussion? All in favor with a right hand vote? Any opposed? Janet, do I have the one to be signed? I think I do. Oh, you, okay. No wonder I couldn't find it. Anything else? Sit. Motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank, Thank you all. all. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes